May Sarasvati, the goddess of learning, who is pale like a garland of kunda flowers, the moon in the frost, who is dressed in white, whose hands are occupied in playing the lute, and who is seated on a white lotus flower, who is always adored by the gods Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, protect me by completely removing the dullness of my intellect. The goddess Sarasvati is primarily known as the giver of knowledge, but she is actually much more than that. Another of her names is Vak, which means speech. At its most subtle level, this means the original sound vibration that brings about creation. For the Vedas say that all things originate with sound, specifically the Vedic mantra, Om. In all her features, the goddess is always intimately involved with creation, suffusing it with her own being in many different ways. All the names and forms of the manifest world have their origin in Sarasvati, who inspires the sages to compose mantras that form the basis of the creative ritual language of the Vedic tradition. Indeed, poets in all traditions have recognized the presence of the muse, the divine goddess who inspires their creations. Sarasvati appears as a luminous woman of splendid beauty, riding upon a swan. She is dressed simply in a white sari, eschewing the fabulous ornaments often seen on other forms of the goddess, as she is the epitome of perfect learning, which culminates in detachment from material opulence. Her effulgence symbolizes the light of knowledge that destroys the darkness of ignorance. Hindu students traditionally offer prayers to Sarasvati before commencing their studies. The Vedas are said to be her children, born of her union with the Supreme Lord. She can thus bestow any teaching, material or spiritual, for the Vedas contain the fullness of both. The word Sarasvati means one who bestows the essence of self, for ultimately all knowledge ends in knowing one's true spiritual nature as a part of the Absolute, as the Absolute. Going back to the last part of that opening prayer, it says, protect me by completely removing the dullness of my intellect. Intellect here means the power of the mind to understand. So the power of the mind to understand oneself, one's situation, or life in general. And then later on it says, she is the epitome of perfect learning, which culminates in detachment from material opulence. So by being granted the boon of greater intellect, the power to understand, that understanding leads to detachment from material opulence, withdraw from the senses, dispassion, disenchantment. What's limited is not the truth, and all actions lead to understanding the truth. The aspirant has to discover his own real nature, which is the goal of all actions and their fruits. So from there, the effort to understand turns inward, where it says, for ultimately, all knowledge ends in knowing one's true spiritual nature as part of the Absolute. 